Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. I'm at you on a Wednesday after the Tuesday in which we saw cable break uh, the year's highs. Uh, that worked out pretty well for us. We had a good day yesterday, long cable through um, through 20. And then short sterling yen, which actually paid even better uh, from 166 or 17. Um, so that was a nice day, uh, but that day is over. New day today, clean slate. Uh, let's avoid hubris. Anyway, uh, let's look at Ray. Actually, let's look at Kiwi. They raised 50. Fucking ballsy, right? Sometimes Kiwis are fucking ballsy, I gotta say. Um, as a guy who sailed all of his life, I got a lot of time for these fuckers. Very good sailors. Um, their rugby team tends to be pretty fun to watch as well if, if you understand rugby which I don't pretend to but anyway got cool uniforms and that hawk thing is fucking pretty cool uh, 50 points surprised everyone let's just look this dial in on this this went from uh, 63 up to 6371 percent on the move now we're back down. I would say now, you know, with rates at five and a quarter, you should really be fishing around for corporate bonds in, in New Zealand. Um, I do think that is the case, <clears throat> but considering I feel like we're going to head risk off the next um, six months, you might want to just delay that a tiny bit, right? So um, you're going to like the yields there. You're going to get seven, eight percent. Um, on some corporate paper there but the FX risk is real because if we do go into sort of some sort of global slowdown Kiwi will get kicked in the balls um, and you know if you just look at the dailies on the Kiwi um, you know this thing could go down to 55 cents you know you don't want to give away that 8% in currency and if you live in New Zealand fine you know go buy your bonds uh, but if you're like us who run currency risk but are looking for value, um, you're going to have to wait just a little bit. You know, you want Kiwi on its knees. Uh, you want their AAA paper to be suffering, uh, and that's when you want to buy it. Anyway, that's longer term. Uh, we're not here on this 10-minute morning blurb for that. Let's look and see what we're looking at today. Dollar yen looks bad. Uh, I mean, it looks bad. I mean, it looks good. Uh, we're short some cross, so <clears throat> and we're short a little uh, dollar yen as well, but probably should be short more. This looks like it wants to continue rates 335. This is a real focus now. Um, you can see the year's low. Um, let's call it 330. We're going to break that. Uh, I don't know. Kind of feels like it. A lot, lot, lot's going to have to do with um, how ADP and ISM services go today. So ADP is at 215. Uh, ISM is at 4. ISM is much more important according to uh, what privateer thinks. Uh, but of course, short dollar yen. Uh, Probably the stronger idea than banging the bond, banging the bid at 68 is just feather into this between 90 and 15, 131, 90, 132.15. Keep in mind, vol's pretty good in FX. You get 100 points both sides typically every day. Um, so if you don't believe that dollar yen can trade 132.50 today, uh, you're probably a dumbass. Um, is it likely to trade up there? No. Um, it's probably more likely to trade 13070 and then come back to 13170. But the point is this: um, you have chances, and you know one of the reasons FX is as an asset class is back, or it's a great trading class, is you have chances uh, both sides uh, every day. One of the reasons we're focusing on yen and continuation is. Aussie yen and, and CAD yen. Let's just look at these these charts here. This is more of a break trade, uh, which I know probably most of you are not uh, interested in. 
um, or don't really understand uh, the discipline you need to do this kind of trade. Um, so I don't know, but it's just something to focus on. There will be people here trading this through 8860. There will also be people trading this CAD yen um, through 97. Let's call it 65. CAD yen <coughs> becomes more interesting if you see oil shit the bed. Um, 8108 is, is a long way from uh, pooping on the top sheet. So uh, just keep an eye on that for the CAD yen. Um, what else are we looking at today? <laughs> We're looking at silver. Shit. Um, where's my silver chart? I haven't traded silver in a while. I used to, I used to trade silver around. Um, I don't know if I could call him a client um, or what. But is a guy out of the Middle East. We his nickname was the Silver Fox. <clears throat> I don't know. It's kind of a gay nickname, but. Um, he was great at silver, and he he had some flow behind him. Um, that's fucking gold, you dingbat. XAG USD. I don't. It's been years since I've traded silver, but now's the time here, only because it's it's a little bit stretched. Um, T Vol is just off the fucking charts here. I think that was a five percent day in silver yesterday. Um, we're actually going to fade this, uh, which is fairly dangerous, so I'd be careful on this. But we get up to 25 and a half or 26 bucks today. We're going to put on a little bit of a fade. Um, this has gone 20% uh, in a month. Getting a little stretchy, stretchy. Um, but wow, what a beautiful move. If you caught this, uh, bravo. Um, one of the guys... You can catch him on Twitter. His name's Joe Mazzella. He taught me how to trade. He's one. He's maybe the, also the best silver trader in the world. Um, he called this on his channel. Uh, if you don't know Joe, check him out. Um, but yeah, silver's a fade. Um, everybody's long now or chasing this. Nobody is short. So this becomes interesting. Dollar Swiss is kind of the same trade as silver today. You know, we're down through the year's lows here. Um, 9060 was the was the year's lows. What was it? 9060. Um, we've talked about this all year. Dollar Swiss at 90 cents is just gets kind of sticky, even though retail is still, according to um, some of the retail sentiment data that I get, are still fucking long up the ass. Um, that gives me comfort because I have some resting bids um, sort of between 89 and a half and 90 10 uh, today if we do get down there uh, we'll be taking we'll be putting that trade on taking on some risk long dollar Swiss um, catching that proverbial falling knife let's go to sterling yen chart that was um, that was a good one yesterday We broke through these um, 166 highs, traded up to 166.40 was the high? Yeah, 166.40. Um, we sold, we feathered into this between 10 and 30. The average in yen was 17. Uh, if you're short this from yesterday up at 166.10, there's two things you can do. We've harvested most of it. We have a core short, and we're going to try and hold this for something bigger right because you are technically near the top of the sterling yen range right i mean the tippity top on risk on everything is fucking joy is 172 we are certainly not close to everything is joy in the world so if you're short at 166 and maybe you bought 165 30 so your your average is 167 30 or something like that which is kind of the situation we're in um, you can remain short 
uh, and then you could sell this thing if we balance up to 165.60, which is, you know, two and a half standard deviations from, from the 34. And you can really look for this thing to have a few more days now um, left-hand side, so lower. Or you can just harvest and move on. Um, the one thing you do have to be careful of is if you traded this and sold through the lows, which is, which is I don't know, like a, kind of a ninja move. Um, what was the low yesterday? 16. It's traded down to 96. Where do you put your stop? This is a real tricky one. Trading these long wicked bars are super, super tricky if you, if you missed near the top of the wick. I'd be super careful with that because this could easily go up 100 points, right? I mean, cable could cable could pop. Um, is there any, you know, we got, we got sterling PMI, final PMI out of Europe today. Sterling could pop, um, although PMIs are likely to come in lower. A lot could happen is all I'm saying. Anyway, um, we like core short sterling again. On so many levels, this is a beautiful chart. This long wick one here, you know, nose to toes went 800. So nose to toes on this is, you know, easily 158. Um, but e we even like this through 158. So keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at Euro Norway. I don't even know why. Um, that we've had mixed results with this fucker. But... With oil just continually through the roof, even though we're a little bit risk off, this is a fade up near 11, 1140. Um, so a percent higher, why I'm even mentioning that now. What else? Silver. Oh, yeah. Let's go to sterling and euro sterling. Euro sterling, um, this also paid yesterday. We talked about this 87.74. It was basically the same trade as buying cable. We had both on. Um, we harvested the euro sterling a little early, as I guess we're prone to do, because we're pussies. Um, but it's higher now, uh, and if you held, you probably stopped out uh, on this move back to 78. There's not a lot to do on euro, euro sterling. I wouldn't fade this now. This actually looks like this could run a little bit. Uh, which gives me some concern with cable. If you're still long cable, um, I mean, all the professionals have to be long. I don't think people understand this. They have to be long. They don't have a choice. They're not sitting home at home or in their little small office in Switzerland just aggregating beer money. They have to trade to an NAV. They have ratios they have to respect. Um, so they're all long still. This thing is basically 30 points from the break. That's That doesn't look great. Um, so we will not be buying this on the dip. We're just comfortable short sterling yen here. Um, but I'd be real careful. There's going to be stops now, uh, 49 to 29 in cable. Um, all the CTAs, they have to be long. Anyway, I've said enough. Um, the, the, the silver chart is, is cute. The dollar Swiss is cute today. Nothing is super close. We're looking, we're keeping an eye on this Aussie yen and CAD yen, um, these break trade levels. If the moment looks right, if we're getting a wobbly risk off, um, if equities, which is this chart, which was kind of bearish, but it would have been a lot more bearish if we closed the lows, which we did not do. Uh, if equities are taking a digger, um, we'll roll with that. Many of you have asked about Apple just because you're praying that I fail, uh, which I find cute. Uh, yeah, we're still short. Yeah, our stop is up here, 169.17. Yeah, we did take half off the table, so we're actually short at 167.66 now. Uh, so there's no drama on this trade. It's just another way to exercise uh, risk off. And since I fucking hate Apple products, even though I've bought a cartload of them for my children, uh, it's just kind of fun. Anyway, 
blah, blah, blah. I'm done here. Good luck today. Go make some dough. You deserve it.